In his spare time, Brent okay. Warner helps lead an after-school kids club. Uh, we're going to play um, Guess the Job. But most of the children here would struggle to guess what happened to Brent when he was a young man back in the 80s, caught up in gang riots caused by racial tension. We'd, we were doing our usual thing. We basically went into the city centre to, to go drinking. We decided that we'd sort of go into uh, the no-go area of Nottingham. And um, two or three black lads came down. I can't remember exactly how many, but it was something like that. And they basically said, you know, this is a, a no-go area for you white guys. And obviously they, there was a lot of expletives in that. And um, one of my mates went to punch um, one of these guys. And uh, my mates got back in the car and we started chasing after them. And we recruited some mates and we took a couple more car loads down. But things had actually escalated somewhat. I was driving down this road and uh, there was a, a gang of youths coming up the road. And there was a side road as well and I'd kind of got myself cornered. And uh, they started to run towards us and uh, one of them threw a petrol bomb at the car. We were sort of questioned for a couple of days by the police. They didn't let us go for a couple of days. And um, we were put on remand. Along with his mates, Brent ended up in court waiting to hear the judge's verdict. He said, Brent Edward Warner, you're nothing but a thug and I'm going to send you away for a long time. And he sentenced me to four years. I felt pretty rotten and, um, you know, wondered what was going to happen because you've got a lot of time to think. And so I was thinking about all these different things and, and just about life in general. And I, eventually, I, I, I don't know whether somebody told me or whether I just made my own mind up that I needed to say sorry for what I'd done, and so I did. In prison, Brent started to go to chapel, and a few months after his release, chose to become a Christian in a local church. This was an all-new experience for me. And um, you know how they say the grass is greener on the other side? I tell you, the colours in that church look different. They, something had happened. It was as if I'd transferred into a different country. It was, it was incredible. How has your life changed since becoming a Christian? It's changed dramatically, particularly on the anger issues. I was very angry, uh, very frustrated. And, um, and, that, and that was obviously pointed in a particular direction. I don't feel any racial hatred at all. That's gone completely. Um, and, um, and so, yeah, it's just, it's just great to be free um, of, of, of those kind of things. They're horrible things. Now, I've always liked the hymn Amazing Grace. The reason I like that hymn is, is, is that the guy that wrote the hymn, he clearly had an experience, and there was clearly a change in his life that had happened. And, uh, and, I, and I think that that change was is, is that he'd realised how rotten and bad he was and how gracious God had been to forgive him. And there's a new version out of it now. And um, he goes into like this refrain, um, my, my, my chains are gone, I've been set free. Because I feel for me that's clearly what's happened. You know, I've been set free. And, um, and you can't buy that. Grace that 
Amazing grace.